Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. Hi, my name is Erica, and I'm here with my husband, King. Um, we're delighted to bring to you our new offering, Love Block Wine. It's Kim Crawford, the winemaker for Love Block Wine. So we've got three new releases going worldwide very shortly, so I hope you enjoy them. Today we have the pleasure of reuniting with Erica and Kim Crawford, who are winding up a whirlwind trip in the United States to be promoting the inaugural release of their Love Block wines in the United States, imported by Terlato Wines International. And you will be able to purchase a Sauvignon Blanc, a Pinot Gris, and a Pinot Noir and everyone is familiar with the name Crawford, but this is a brand new project that they own and produce. Erica is the founder and Kim is the winemaker. And what, what they, their aim is to produce true and naked terroir wine that is, or I should say grapes translated into wine. They're joining us from New York City. Thank you so very much, Erica and Kim, today for joining us. So, Hi, right, thank you. It's a real pleasure to be back in America. <laughs> so, Erica, everyone loves a love story. So, tell us about the name Love Block. Well, um, we bought a piece of land, and as you know, Marlborough is made up of two valleys, and uh, we bought a piece of land, a vineyard land, to um, produce grapes under our previous label, and walked up the hill one day. And the hills are about 900 feet tall. And I looked over the ocean towards Wellington and the North Island. And, you know, it was so peaceful. It just lifted me above my troubles. Um, Kington around, looked the other way at a very raw, challenging piece of land and decided to, uh, we decided to make wine there. What, is it difficult to get to that piece of land uh, at 900 feet? I mean, it, uh, is it everything all hand done, because I would think that maybe you can't have mechanization in the vineyard there? No, it's not too bad, to be honest. It's, a, it's an old farm, so there's tracks to to the flat areas that we've got. So, it's, no, it's not too difficult to, to, to work. It's just very windy. So, oh, in terms of wind, it's the top speed we've had last year was 100 miles an hour on top of the hill, so... Oh, my. So that totally affects the way you're growing the vines up there then, right, Kim? Yeah, we, we, they really, really struggle to, to grow. So we'll, the growth we'd normally get in three years in Marlborough, I think it's going to take us about eight years to achieve the same there. But we live with that. Oh, okay. Now, t- tell us, g- give us, give us your philosophy here. I, I know that you're that you are v- that you're the two of you are very much involved with growing your grapes sustainably and meticulous soil and plant management. But if a vine has to struggle and it has to do so in such a harsh environment with a hundred mile per hour winds, does this kind of tie into the name of Love Block? I can tell you it most certainly does because the economics of 
farming on a challenging piece of land like this is quite different. And, of course, we are farming this, this, um, these grapes organically as well. So, trust me, you do it for love. You don't necessarily do it for the normal profit that you would usually get. <laughs> oh, talk, talk to us about the Pinot Gris to begin with. You know, we think that Pinot Gris is the, um, the natural um, cellmate or flatmate for, uh, for Sauvignon Blanc as a white varietal. Mm-hmm. And we make it in a style that perhaps is a bit different to what, what we've done before. So I think stylistically what we're aiming for is Pinot Grigio with flavor. I know oh, that okay. might be quite bad, but we're getting the acidity in the in the structure of the Pinot Gris. We put Pinot Grigio, but we're putting Pinot Gris flavor profile with it. So it's so, quite an interesting little blend, realistically. Is it lighter than other Pinot Gris from New Zealand? Um, I would say it's not as pretty, and but okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit more acidic and much drier in style. So it's bone dry in style. So. I think from my point of view, um, you know, it's, it's a style that's not cloying. It's a style that's considered, and it's lovely linear tension from the nose back through the back palate. And, th- and you're growing Pinot Gris at this, at this windy vineyard site, correct? That's right. Mm, so the Pinot Gris has to deal with this very, very strong winds, which then, as I am reading here, is what, it contributes greatly to the berries being so small, so that's why you're getting all this concentration of flavor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, they they, they don't like growing there very much. So when when the cell division, <laughs> cell expansion comes along, and the berry there's just no water to do it, so they don't do it. So most of the berries would be smaller than your little fingernail. Oh wow! Mm. Oh, it my. also means the survival of the sickest, of course. <laughs> yeah. but only the strong survive up there. Mm. Okay, talk to us about the Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc, there's, there's two parts to the vineyard. There's a valley floor part, which is very typical Marlborough, I suppose, and then there's a a bit on the hill which we barrel ferment and do full malolactic natural fermentation and then stick it back into the main blend just to give the wine a bit of structure and a, a bit of softness and a bit of mouthfeel. So it's... I would say it's, it's a line to a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, but I think has a distinctive point of difference in terms of um, mouthfeel. Mm. And how about the Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir, that's from a, uh, one of our vineyards in Central Otago, so from the Bendigo region. It's, um, it's I think, the warmest side in Central Otago, so it's, it's got beautiful colour and I think some lovely fruit and well-balanced wine. The beauty of Central Otago is both the length of the day. You know, it's so far south that sometimes the day are 18 hours long, so wow. it's a huge daytime. But also, the temperature goes from 95 down to about 45 at night at the harvest time. So we've got a huge diurnal fluctuation. So we get we get the great colour that you see in Central Otago Pinots. So how do you guys get back and forth from island to island? Are you flying or using a helicopter? I mean, you do. You, are you this this time of year? Is all the pruning done? Oh shoot! Well, you're reversed. You're reversed. We're reversed. We're so yes, yes, yes. I, uh, the, the reason I have to go back on Saturday is because we're picking on Wednesday. So, oh yeah. my! Oh mm. gosh! And and what grape variety are you picking on Wednesday? We're doing some um, Sauvignon Blanc first and then some Albarino out of uh, one of the northern regions called Gisborne. But it's not oh. for our brand, it's for someone else. But we're just having a little fiddle. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, how so cool. And, and as you're traveling around the U.S., what kind of reception are you getting from sommeliers with the three wines? Oh, so good. They um, they really like particularly the Pinot Gris, and I think that you know they're not scared by the price point, which is twenty three dollars for Sauvignon and Pinot Gris. Okay. And between thirty five and forty for the Pinot Noir. So we really humbled by the response by the page. Well, if you're getting these grapes or the individual, the berries are the size of my little fingernail. Twenty three dollars all the way to the United States is an absolutely steal of a deal. We're hoping so. 
Mm. Okay, Kim, talk to us about your comment here that anything from the Pinot family is better with a year in the bottle. So would people, because of secondary flavors, so when people are, what they're buying in the United States right now, is it the 2011 vintage wines? Yeah, well, both the Pinot Noir and the Pinot Gris are 2011. And I just, especially with the Pinot Gris, when you first bottle them, they, they are very simple wines, and it takes a little while for the, for I think, the, the honeysuckle and the lychee compounds to come through. It takes about a year in the bottle before you start seeing those, I think, really pleasant notes in the wine. So it's ideal if they are aged, I think, at least a year before we release them. So. And that's so lovely that you're doing that for us. Well, yeah, of course. Let me say, with, with Tolada, we had quite a lot of well, no, engagement. Yeah, we, so it took a while to get the ones here as well. My cash flow that's tied up, not theirs. <laughs> say that again, Erica. I say, I mean, of course, um, bottle product is cash flow tied up. Yes. But we finally came to an agreement, and we threw to be together with Tolada, and yeah, the one's on the way. Okay, so anybody in, in the United States, I mean, Trollado wines are distributed nationally, so whoever their wholesaler is for other Trollado wines, they'll be able to buy the Love Block Vineyard wines. And, and it'll it, be in, I'm sorry, go on. It'll be in specific houses because we haven't got the volume to cover the entire country at the moment. Okay. Uh, it'll be on shelf in specific states. Um, and at this time, we're still tying up some, some loose deals. Do do you know what the the six states are now? Can you name them? It'll definitely be in New York, um, Oregon, Washington State, um, the Carolinas. Oh, good. Il- yeah, and Illinois. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. Yeah, now we, you know, it's a market that the U.S. has been very good to us um, in the way that they've responded to us through the past fifteen, sixteen years. It's a market that I love, and I think that um, people are open to new things, and we hope that they'll try and like this new style of wine that we're making. So do you have a website do- dedicated to the Love Block wines? Yes, it's, it's um, Love Block Wine, and it goes live in two weeks' time at, when we launch the product in New Zealand. Okay, so it'll be loveblockwinesplural.com? Uh, yeah. Okay. Love Rock Wine Singular. Oh, Singular. Okay, Wine Singular. And yeah, I think if you, if you just Google Love Rock, it will pop up. Okay, and can are you going to have video to show us? You know what? Are you guys taking any pictures of what the vineyard looks like? Oh, I'd love to see what that hill type hilltop view looks like. That you, Erica, you first were inspired. Yeah, we definitely will have um, full sets of photographs on the on the on the on the website, and we hope to bring you some some live coverage from time to time, tastings and and blogging and little little um, snippets of what's going on at the vineyard at the time. Wonderful. Erica and Kim Crawford, thank you so very much for joining us today on Wine and Dine to introduce your new Love Block wine. Mm. Safe travel Thank back. You. Safe travel back to New Zealand. Thank you. We will have links up for you to learn more as well. And uh, you heard the six states where it's available. You're listening to Wine and Dine. Now you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iWineRadio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes radio icon and scroll down to news and talk directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. 
the more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there.